In this video I'm going to show you how to texture a low poly game asset in Blender. We're going to use the missile turret that we modeled in the last video. It's a really powerful technique while also being quite easy to do. So if you're a beginner you should be absolutely fine. This video is part of my mini series on how to create a missile turret game asset. We go all the way from the default cube in Blender to launching a bunch of target seeking missiles in Unity. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and liking this video. I even hired a sexy dancer to seduce you. Well, the pictures looked a lot better on Craigslist and I also thought I'd get a woman. But he wanted the money up front, so I'm stuck with this guy now. Anyhow, subscribing and liking really helps this channel to grow. Now enjoy the tutorial. And now we can do the texturing and I want to use a fairly common technique for low poly, which is we're just going to use a very small texture with a bunch of colors like squares or circles. And then we're going to scale all the UVs down super, super slow. So all on one specific color. And that way you can use a tiny texture. And another advantage is like maybe you don't like the saturation of the colors or you want them to be a little bit more red. You can just easily go into Photoshop, take this image that has the textures on it and modify that. I'm going to show you that later. So for now, let's just go into UV editing. By default, we're in edit mode, so tap to go out because we want all of it. So shift select everything we have here. Well, except the cutters because they don't need a material anyway. We have this side. Okay, now tap to go into edit mode three faces a select all and then we're going to say you let's see smart uv project a little bit eyelet margin say okay and they're all here okay so now they're unwrapped and they're unwrapped on on, on on nothing so to speak what we need is an image here so we're just going to image make a new one and yeah this can be really small um, what some games do is it, they just use like one pixel for one color. Uh, we don't need to do that. You can just say 256 or something. Uh, we don't need any alpha color. We can just choose, let's say, a, a middle gray. And we call this turret colors. Say OK. And the image is here. Very important right now, the image is only in Blender, but we definitely want it on our hard drive so it's not getting lost. So we could say image and say save. And it's going to say toad colors in this project PNG. Yep, I'm going to save that. Now it's an actual image on our hard drive. Now you can get colors in a bunch of different ways. I'm just going to show you how to do it in Blender. Um, oh, first of all, let's make the material. So shading uh, select either one oh, actually with all selected the material right now oh, it's just called material let's call it turret so they're all going to have the same material and for the color we want to tell it don't use this base color but use the image we just created so shift a uh, let's see texture image texture say take that color that's going to be the color for our turret. And now we can just choose the turret colors we just created. As I mentioned, why right now it's all gray. Okay, so only this one has the material. So once again, we select this, shift select, shift select, and lastly, this one. For some reason, this one worked, the side thing here. And then we're going to say Control L, link materials. It's all gray. It's all looking good. Okay. Now, of course, we don't want it to be purely gray. We want some actual colors. So we can go into texture paint. The image is already open, the turret colors. And I hit N to bring up the side window. And we can make a palette here. We can actually say a new one. And I want some like greenish colors. So I select this one. I think I want greenish colors, but the green to be on the uh, yellow side. So I'm going to select a dark green here. With F, I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller. Just paint it like that. 
I'm just the idea is just to get the the colors on the image here. It doesn't matter where exactly they are right now. I think I want something really dark, almost black, so like this, and a bit like lighter, desaturated green, maybe even a pretty brownish, ugly as yellow, something like this. And I don't like the green anymore. I'm gonna select S to select this colors, this color. And I want to make it darker, uh, like this. Trying to think if we need some red. We can just put it in there. And of course, the, the nice thing is you can easily adjust things here. So maybe some kind of uh, fairly saturated red, something like this. Now, very, very important is that you save this image. Again, this is only existing in Blender right now. So image, and you see this star means it's unsaved. So just save it. Uh, happens to a lot of beginners, has happened a lot of times to me too, that you do all this awesome texture painting and then it's gone. Mm, one more thing we can also do before we start selecting where which color goes, I think is let's take out the shininess. So we can just click here in the uh, material tab and increase the roughness so now it's no more shiny super shiny not shiny and now to put all the colors where you want what you do is um, we can go back to UV editing here make sure we are in used to be look dev mode I think it's material preview now which I think is actually a better name and what we can do now, first of all, we have those selected. And to always sync the selection, what we do here to here, we have to take this little checkbox. And now when we are hovering over this side and we hit S, I'm going to scale this all the way like this and put it in here. Ta-da, it's all dark except, god damn it. Uh, let's see if I select this. Ah, I didn't have that selected. So I'm gonna do this too. Actually, this one that I actually want to be black. <laughs> so I'll just put it in here, just something to start. And then, yeah, you can choose. Just go, go into this and say, okay, you know what? Actually, I want the color of this to be green. So I select A. 3a and then I move this to be dark green and I want the wings to be black so what I do now is 3 and add a shift a shift a mm, I want the top wing to be black too yeah but for now I'm just gonna hit Control plus to increase the selection so I have this wing selected so now they are selected here, right? And I can drag them out, G. And you can see now we have those uh, black wings. On a side note, if you want to uh, like maybe modify this a lot or you have something more complex, what is really useful is face maps. So with the faces selected, you click plus. So you make a new face map and call this wings. And then you click a sign. So now they are assigned to this. So if you deselect, now you choose the wings. You can say select, and you have the selection back. This is really useful for, you know, just trying out different colors and stuff. I played around a bit, and this is the color scheme I'm going with now. I changed some colors, and as I mentioned before, it's really easy to just replace the image texture once we're in Unity. And you might also notice I made the wheel a little bit smaller, but also wider, so it's not sticking out that much anymore. So the overall shape of this thing is now defined mostly by those big uh, rocket jammers. Let's get this thing ready for export. And the first thing I want to do is cut up the placeholders into separate objects, so we can work with that in Unity. I'm just gonna go over the modifiers here, hit Control A, and apply all of those. 
Uh, now it's just one single object. So if I go tab edit mode and I'm going to select all with A and now say P and separate by loose parts. So now they're all their own objects. And with all of those still selected, I can tap out, go into object mode and set object, set origin to geometry. That matters because that's actually the position that Unity is going to use. And we can also scale this a bit. So let's say S, Y, scale this in. Whoop. And then G, Y, move this to the front. So it's kind of here. Just going to be a little bit easier than in Unity to adjust those things. Now, when it comes to exporting as an FBX, there is a little problem, which is that we have a hierarchy here. And if we, if we were going to export with the uh, experimental transform, that's not going to work. Somehow it only works for one level hierarchy. So if you have one, one thing parented to another thing, that's totally fine. But we have uh, like one thing parented to another thing, parented to another thing, which is what we have. It's just going to give you some weird errors. The scaling, the position, all of that is going to be off. So what we can do instead, first of all, we're going to rotate the object. So it's pointing in the negative y direction. That's going to be the transform dot forward in Unity, the z axis. And this is already done here. Now I'm going to go into object mode. I'm going to select everything. Make sure everything is selected. And now I'm going to say RX minus nine zero. Looks totally weird, I know, but that's the way it's done, unfortunately. And then you go to control A, apply rotation and scale, and then you rotate it back. So RX nine zero so now everything has this uh, let's see item this rotation of 90 in it and don't ask me why but that's just the way it works when you go from blender to unity but really once you get used to it it's uh, pretty simple and of course if you don't have like this uh, rather deep nested hierarchies you can use the the normal stuff so i'm going to select all of it and then as a file export fbx and i limit it to selected objects um, we don't have anything selected other than meshes so we don't have to specify it here and so we're not going to use apply transform right and so this uh, it always gives warning and it does so for a very good reason there are just a bunch of bugs in there and yeah and for the apply scalings, we are going to use FBX unit scale. And yeah, this is it. Bake animation. I, I mean, we don't have any, but sometimes when you play around with uh, like key meshes and stuff, I, I try to play it safe and just uncheck bake animation because that can give you some weird results. And then we're going to call it Toad and export. Okay, this is it for this video. I hope you learned something. And as always, if you have any kind of questions, feedback, or maybe ideas what you want to see a tutorial on, just leave a comment below or join my Discord server. Until then, thank you for watching and goodbye.